If you've never touched rigid body simulations in Blender, then this tutorial is gonna be perfect for you. We're gonna be looking at the very basics and the goal here is to take you through everything you need to know to set up this stack of cubes and then to take these spheres, we're gonna be looking at things like how do you do animation and then switch the animation off and then let it turn into a simulation at a certain point. All of these little things you might be curious about but have never actually been able to do. This tutorial is gonna take you through the whole process. Now, I'm gonna be showing you exactly what you see here pretty much. This is my original. The only thing is we'll do the materials and the lighting a little bit differently. But I think this is gonna be a fantastic tutorial for you if you wanna kind of get into rigid body simulations and understand it a bit better. So keep watching and let's make something awesome. So we're gonna be using the default cube to get started, the most simple object in Blender. And I think it's gonna work great for our purposes. So let's go ahead and click on the default cube. And we want this one to be 10 times smaller. So with the cube selected, we're gonna press S and then point one and then press enter. Now, one of the things um, we're gonna quickly do is we're gonna go into a front orthographic view. We're gonna go G and then Z and holding in control, let's just snap it one unit up like this. So now it's sitting on the floor precisely. And if we go shift A and we add in a plane, we can now do something here because we have an object and we have an object that it can collide with. So we can have an object fall. So just for demonstration purposes, let's go into our front view. Let's grab this cube and go shift D to duplicate it and just have an example one over here. And let's just now go over to our physics and under our physics now, we're gonna go ahead and with this cube selected, we're gonna go and give it a rigid body. And by default, you're gonna see there is a type and it's set to active. Now the active is what we actually want in this case because this is not just a passive object sitting there waiting for an interaction. It's actually gonna be falling, interacting with gravity and so on. So we're gonna leave it as active. And the animated here, we're gonna to get to that a little bit later with our um, colliding spheres that hit our stack. But you're gonna also see another very important thing to take into account is gonna be the shape. And this is just gonna tell um, Blender how we want this cube to interact with the surface down here. In this case, it's set to convex hull, which is quite efficient, but it's not gonna give you the best result. The best result is usually gonna be like a mesh. So it's gonna be direct mesh on mesh contact. Um, it's just gonna take more simulation time. But because this is a perfect cube, we can actually go and in this instance, change it to a box which will work just fine. This isn't always gonna work for everything. If you're doing something like gravel, um, you're better off going for a different method. But because we're working, working with a cube, this is gonna be perfect. So always keep that in mind. Um, there are some other things here like the sensitivity and you can enable a collision margin. This is essentially just gonna be the distance between the object that is um, simulating here and the ground that it's gonna be hitting, for example. So in this case, it's 0 0.04 meters. We're just gonna turn that off for now since we are working with the box over here. Then with that out of the way, now you kind of have an understanding of that. Let's grab the plane here, which is gonna be our floor. Let's go ahead and give that a rigid body as well. And now you see the type here. This time we're gonna change it to passive. And I think that it's pretty self-explanatory, active versus passive. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna come to the shape and we have a few options here. I think we're gonna go with convex hole in this case. That has a few limitations I'll explain in a second. But if we now were to go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see our cube falls and interacts quite beautifully with the ground here. Okay, so let's have a look at that again. I'm gonna go up and hitting space bar, it falls. Let's go back to frame one. Let's rotate it a bit, then hit the space bar. And we can see we have something like this, pretty cool. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, and I did this deliberately so you guys can understand, at the moment, Look how big this cube looks. Like the, the motion is so slow. And the reason is because this cube, Blender thinks that this cube is much bigger than it actually is. If we press N on our keyboard and we go to our item, we can actually see here, even though we've scaled it, we need to actually come here and apply the scale. So we're gonna go Control A and apply the scale. Now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see that looks a lot more accurate. So that's one of the things you need to take into account. In the beginning, when we scale this down by pressing S and then point one, what that did is it scaled it down, but we didn't tell Blender to take that into account. So we always need to go Control A and apply the scale whenever we're scaling anything in object mode. 
If you're going into edit mode and you're scaling it there, then it doesn't matter as much. But that's something very important, especially if you're a beginner, people get stuck on that and it messes a lot of things up. And when Blender is looking as well at the under the sensitivity at these collision margins, if you're using them, the scale being applied is also gonna matter in that case. So keep that in mind. So now we have a nice working example here. So let's actually just grab this cube over here. The one we scaled at the beginning, let's just go control A as well. Just make sure to apply the scale for that. Um, so yeah, um, instead of having to now grab this cube and give it the same rigid body and go through all of the same, um, you know, setting it up, we can now just that we have our little test guy here working and we have that work um, just where we want it. We can now grab this cube here, holding and shift, we can select this cube that has these properties. We can now go F3 and type in copy and we can go copy from active. Now this cube has the same properties. If we go to frame one, we hit the space bar. It's actually simulating, but because it's sitting on the ground, we don't see it falling. So let's grab the first uh, example cube here, just delete it. And now we're gonna grab our cube over here and let's go to our front view. Let's go into, and let's go to the first frame. And we're gonna go, I think quickly tab into edit mode and just go shift B with everything active or control B and let's just give it a slight bevel and roll the middle mouse button and then tab back out. Right click and go shade smooth. And now we're gonna go shift D in object mode and holding it in control, just move it and snap it till it's sitting right on top of this cube. And then go shift R a few times. And let's just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like so. And now we're gonna grab this whole stack in our front of graphic. We're gonna go shift D to duplicate, hold in control and just snap it on a grid over till it's just right up against these cubes over here. And then we're gonna to go to our right orthographic view, click and drag to select all of these guys. And now right orthographic view, we're gonna go shift D to duplicate, hold in control, snap it till it's touching right on the side like so. And we're gonna go shift R, shift R, and keep doing that till we have six going this way, like so. And now we can just grab these guys. We can go G, hold and control in our right view. And let's just move them till they snap right to the middle, stacking our stack like so. And then let's grab this floor. Let's just go S to scale that up about this much. And then S, X, scale it along the X. Go control A, make sure to apply that scale. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add in a sphere that's gonna be like a little cannonball that we can have coming in here. So let's go shift A, add in under the mesh options a UV sphere. Let's just go S to scale that guy down about this much, something like this. Then go control A and apply to scale. Let's get our rigid body, let's give it um, a rigid body. We're gonna leave it as active and we're gonna come here and enable animate it. And under the shape, we're gonna make it sphere because it works well with a sphere. Then let's go into our front view and on frame one, we're gonna go G, X and move it back to about here. And we're gonna go I and insert a location keyframe. Then let's come up to frame 10. And in frame 10, we're gonna go G, X and move it over to here and go I and insert a location keyframe. So from frame one to frame 10, we have it moving like this. So now if we go over to our rigid bodies for this sphere, we can actually go to frame um, nine, just before frame 10, and we can come here to the animated and then and give it a keyframe for the animated property. That just means while it's animated, it won't run the simulation. Then going up to frame 10, we're gonna release the animation, so no longer take it into account. So turn it off and then add a keyframe for that. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, our animation stops at just the right time and the inertia continues and hits our wall. The only thing is here, as cool as this looks, we want more damage. But why is this not happening? Because if we select one of our cubes, we can actually see under the mass that it's one kilo, which is way too much. Let's just make it 0 0.05. And we want all of the rest to be like that. So before we dis deselect this one, let's just hold and shift and left click and select the others. And this one here is the main active one that we just changed this parameter. So if you now go F3 and we type in copy from, we can go copy from active and now all of these other ones share that same property of 0 0.05 kilos. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, 
the mass from the sphere is gonna have a lot more impact, like so. And you can also grab the sphere itself and you can change the mass here. So if you made the mass 0.04 as well for the sphere, go to frame one, hit the space bar, it's much less effective. But if we make it something like 10 kilos, um, yeah, it's far more destructive. So go ahead, you can mess around with this, make it something like 0.5 kilos and see what that works for you. That's, you know, it looks pretty good. And that is how simple it is to actually get the sort of dynamic between um, the different objects in the scene. Just by adjusting the mass and placing things the right way, you can make some really cool rigid body effects in Blender. Now, um, let's just grab this ball, right click and go shade smooth. And just so you know, you can actually grab your sphere. You can go shift D to duplicate it. And then just with this new duplication, you can actually come here and grab your keyframes and just go G and move them all up a little bit. And um, you might have to come to something like frame five, enable auto king and then just go G and move it. So it's in a different position. So where the starting frame is now, you can see if you go to frame one, this duplication will happen as well, but it'll just be a little bit offset to the first one. So you can kind of duplicate this at any point and then just change the first keyframe and then just drag it along the time timeline if you wanted to have multiple spheres, which I do in this case. So yeah, that's a lot of fun. So now it's only a matter of grabbing your camera and positioning the camera however you want. So in this case, I'm gonna have it kind of coming off from the side here. Something like this it looks really cool. I'll go to my camera settings and change the focal length to like 95. Zoom out a little bit. Kind of have it maybe looking a little bit lower like this. And then you can kind of, um, now there's something I wanted to show you. If we were to actually go and grab an edge here and extrude it up and then tab back out, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, it's all just gonna explode because this surface here under the physics is actually using the convex hull, which is just kind of like a bounding box approximation. So we would have to do something like a mesh. So if we go to frame one now and we hit the space bar, it works a bit better, but we'd have to come and check that sensitivity by making it much lower. So let's have a look at that. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, for me personally, what I would just do in this case is just actually go shift A and add in a separate plane, rotating it on the X, moving it back and just scaling this one and not giving this one actually um, any rigid body properties. Um, but you know, that's just something to keep in mind when you're working with these different settings. But a scene like this looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna go control B and just drag over the camera to limit the rendering to the camera. And let's go to our render settings. Let's change it to cycles and under the max samples, let's make it something like 50. And now if we go shift A, we can add in an area light and move it up. And let's give that area light a strength of 400. And then go S, X, scale it a little bit. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see we have some lighting. And that's looking pretty cool. Um, so now um, let's grab our s all our little cubes here. So maybe go into the front view and just go ahead and wireframe and select only the cubes and then holding in shift select one of them. Go to your materials and it should already have a material because it was a default cube. So in this case, we don't have to link all of them. But let's just change the base color to something like a nice yellow. And for my original, I added in a wood texture, which I got for free on the internet just by going to Polyhaven. And just I just appended it into Blender. But um, you know, you can go something like this would still look really good. And then you could always add a material to the ground and the wall. But I think another thing that's gonna look really good is if you actually grab these spheres and you give them a material and make them metallic and bring down the roughness and give them both that same material. I think that just looks really good once you run the simulation, just having those kind of nice reflective spheres. Um, another thing you can do is you can add in a sky texture, bring down the strength to 0.1, and then just rotate your sun's position so you get some nice lighting, something like that. And also make sure to actually go to your render settings and enable motion blur. That way we get a much nicer effect 
when we finally um, render this out. Um, it just adds something really nice to it. You can also just change the position of your lighting to get a little bit more rim lighting from the back here. Um, but there's a lot of different ways you can do this. But for now, I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. And let's just go ahead and go to our scene properties. And this is really important. Once you have set up a rigid body system, you have to go to your rigid body world. And the way you do this is by going to your cache. And in this case, let's just make our animation 150 frames long. And let's just say from frame one to frame 150, we wanna cache all of this data. So we're gonna go here under the cache and make it 150. So it's from one to 150 and let's just click bake. And now it's gonna bake this into our blend file. So now if you do make any changes, make sure to delete the bake first, make the changes and then cache the bake again and it should work just fine. So now let's just go to a shot that we like, something like this and let's go render and give this a test render. And have a look at that. That just looks absolutely awesome, especially with that motion blur. So now if you want to render this out as an animation, just go to your output settings, go to your output and choose a destination like the desktop. And then you can change your file format to something like FFmpeg video. And then under the encoding, you can choose your container. I prefer to do MP4. Make sure to save. And then all you have to do is go render and render this out as a final animation. And that's it, guys. That's how simple it is to get started with rigid bodies. We've done the classic um, sort of simulation here with the um, cubes getting knocked over with the marbles or the you know bowling balls, whatever. This is my original here, which you can see is the exact same thing. I just used three balls in this case. And I just added some wood material to my cubes and added in like a quick and dirty concrete material to the floor and wall. But it's the exact same thing that I just showed you guys how to do. And I will be uploading this one to my Patreon in the description below if you guys want to get the blend file. But yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.